pension savings play an important role in providing people with a secure and comfortable retirement. Well-run schemes with appropriate levels of governance are key to protecting and enhancing those retirement savings. Scheme members should be provided with clear information regarding the scheme and have clarity on who is responsible for reviewing and making investment decisions and the possible scope of those decisions in relation to any part of a scheme. Scheme members should have sufficient information to understand what to expect and to assess that the associated service, including the costs of providing it, is an acceptable standard and level. Bob is the owner of a chain of garages and has decided to help his employees save for retirement by setting up an occupational pension scheme and has identified North Beach Trustees Limited as the firm he would like to manage and administer the proposed scheme. Let's follow the journey of the setup of the new scheme and what Bob and his employees might expect from North Beach. Bob meets with Tim of North Beach to discuss the next steps. Tim confirms that subject to agreement of governing documentation and completion of further due diligence checks, North Beach will act as corporate trustee for the occupational pension scheme, take responsibility for the governance of the scheme, be responsible for the monitoring and oversight of persons appointed in relation to the scheme, and be required to hold the governing documentation in relation to each scheme. Following the completion of the governing documentation, Tim meets with his colleagues Tom and May to discuss the new scheme and the responsibilities that North Beach have to the scheme and members as well as to discuss the notification and reporting requirements. Following a recent self-assessment, North Beach adopted a new take-on procedure to ensure that governing documentation requirements are met, that all of the documentation relating to the scheme is stored securely and is readily available for access. Tim, Tom and May then discuss the documentation for the scheme to make sure that they hold the relevant records and are conversant with the governing documentation, the statements of investment principles and other scheme documents. May prepares profile notes to be stored electronically and on the files related to the scheme. May notifies the Commission of the formation of the scheme and arranges for the scheme to be added to the data collection for the Form 126B quarterly return. May notes that the first scheme year end for the occupational scheme will be the 31st of December 2020 and diarises this date for the scheme to be added to the data collection for the Form 127B to be filed with the Commission by 30th of June 2021. May notes that it has been agreed to appoint EMF Asset Management Limited as investment manager to the scheme. May adds details of the terms of the appointment and who regulates EMF to the profile note on the file as well as providing a summary of their responsibilities for inclusion with communications to members of the scheme. As the scheme is licensee directed, a statement of investment principles for the scheme has been prepared. May includes this in the profile note and diarises a future review of the statement. May notes that if the scheme was member directed, a statement of investment principles would not be required. To ensure that sufficient clarity is provided to scheme members on the responsibilities of the parties to the scheme, Tom provides Bob with a new member information sheet. This includes a summary of the key features, benefits and provisions of the scheme, the rights and responsibilities of the licensee, service provider and the member, together with a breakdown of all the fees and charges borne by the member. As the scheme is licensee directed, Tom includes information relating to the investment direction approach of the scheme. It is important that members understand who is responsible for the management and administration of the scheme, as well as who is responsible for the management of the assets set aside for their member's account. Bob has confirmed that as employer, he will meet the costs of the scheme's trustee. However, the investment management fees are deductible from the member's account and will need to be disclosed to the members annually alongside the annual information regarding the contributions to the scheme and investment performance. Using information provided by Bob May creates a contribution schedule for the scheme detailing payment due dates, amounts and how these have been calculated. If contributions are not paid timelessly, May may be obliged to make certain notifications. Bob is pleased to have fixed the pension arrangements for himself and his staff, but is even more pleased to think about something he really understands, fixing cars.